it's been a long time since we've been able to accomplish the goal of winning an SEC championship, but uh, I thought our, our kids did a great job of, of focusing in and uh, getting ready to prepare in the, in the SEC tournament. You know, I, I, I'm gonna admit with our workouts, the emotion of Saturday took a little bit out of us and it took us a little bit longer to get back where we needed to be. But I thought our preparation was really good and, and obviously I thought we played very well against, uh, Wednesday against a, a really good Alabama team. Winning the SEC championship, um, you know, it's just at that moment, it was just such a, you know, at that moment in time, it was just such a relief to, um, you know, un, you know, to finally feel that all that hard work in the fall pay off, and you know, it was, it was very uh, rewarding. And we had all our fans in the stands, and it was so loud there, it felt like we were at home um, receiving the uh, the trophy, and um, it was it was an awesome experience. Alabama can really pitch, they can really play defense, and they, they situationally can, can hit as good as anybody in our league. So um, really, really close to Mitch Gaspard and the job that he has done at Alabama, and I thought he had those guys ready to play, and you know, they're, they're a tough team to beat, especially a place like Hoover, because Alabama played all of their home games at Hoover a year ago, which I thought was a real disadvantage to them to have to travel that far to play all their home games, but you know, come SEC tournament time, there's no question that they're they're an expert on that ballpark. Mangum uh, hits a ground ball right back through the middle. That's vintage Jake Mangum to start the bottom of the first inning. A really hard hit ground ball right past the pitcher. And it's a base hit past the shortstop into left, and that gives the Bulldogs the early lead. I was watching the uh, guys on deck and um, talking to all the other guys, and you know, we had faced uh, Bramlett before, and. You know, the information um, that I get from everyone else in the lineup and constantly talking and, you know, getting all that good communication, it, you know, it made me feel comfortable in my at-bats and I felt like I, you know, I had a, um, a good, good uh, knowledge of what was going to be thrown to me and what certain counts and um, it happened that way. Zach, he had a little bit of that attitude of, I've been waiting for an opportunity like this and I'm gonna bring my best, and he sure did. And, you know, we, he got the opportunity and he made the most of it. He just, he pitched so deep into the game. Um, had a shutout going into the ninth inning there. And uh, when he lost his shutout, we went ahead and took him out of the ball game because he was over 100 pitches. But, uh, you know, he did three different things. He controlled the running game, he dominated the strike zone, and he threw his breaking ball in the strike zone and, and, and really, had two different variations of it. He had a, a slider and a cut fastball and uh, held his velocity the entire time, which is kind of in incredible when you consider the fact that, you know, I think his, his longest outing this year has been 40, 40, maybe 50 pitches. He went out there and threw 100 pitches and had as good a stuff at the end as he had at the beginning. I've been preparing for it for a while. Um, the last time I threw against Alabama, I didn't really, I didn't really do that well. So it was, uh, it was exciting for me to get out there and kind of show what I can do. There's a drive. If it stays fair, it could be trouble down the line in the corner, and it is gone, and it is a home run. It hooked just inside the foul pole at the 335 side. He made a lot of great pitches out of that bat. You know, I just was fortunate enough to foul him off and keep uh, just keep fighting to try and get a good pitch to hit, and he left the curveball up in the zone, and it happened to find the right spot on the barrel and go out. Going to drag a bunt, make the first baseman come to get it. Can he beat the pitcher to the bag? And he does. Holland out, ran the pitcher, Bramlett to the bag. Ground ball, third baseline, backhand, knocked down, gets away. Holland was going to try to score, and then he decided against it. We came out and, you know, we did what we did uh, all year, and we prepared very well um, over at the Hoover High School. and. Um, got ready to go immediately, and you know we were all locked in and focused, and you know just like we have been all year. Rambled off the windup with Collins at third base. And there's a ball that is lined into the outfield. That breaking ball stayed up enough that Rooker could deliver the way.
went down uh, to Baton Rouge and we won the series down there, so we knew they were, they were really hungry to take one from us. And facing Jared Poche, who's, you know, he's been in this league a while and pitching for LSU a while, and he's a phenomenal guy, and he pitched really well that night for them, and um, they just happened to score more runs than us. There's a shot to left for another base hit. Bulldogs back-to-back -back base hits by their eight and nine guys. I think almost every ground ball that, that hit the infield grass was a hit. So credit to LSU, it's a fast infield. They have a club that's athletic and can run. But, you know, when that many balls touch the infield grass and, and we don't get to, to those balls, you know, we're probably either in the wrong spots defensively or, you know, our prep movement and, and our recognition of pitches before they're even thrown uh, aren't where they need to be. But at the same time, I, you know, I thought, we, we did a really good job. I thought we took good swings early in the ball game. Just, to, you know, the balls we hit hard early in the game were right at people, and I thought the balls that they hit on the ground early in the game were in holes. So, in the game works that way sometimes. Moshe ready with a 3-2 pitch. Audit's on the way, and it is hit in the air. A high pop fly off to the right side. Second baseman out. Right fielder calling for it, and they drop it. Now going to second base is Humphrey. The stretch of a 2-1 pitch. Line shot left center field. That one's going to roll all the way to the wall. The Bulldogs are on the board. And Robson is headed for third base. He's going to get there without a play. We had guys in scoring position. And you know, all year, especially with two outs, we've, we've always cashed in and gotten those two out RBIs when we've had guys in scoring position. And you know, um, for that one game, we just we didn't have, we didn't have it uh, happen to you know, cash in in those opportunities. And you know, we're going we're gonna to do that until you know, you know, finish that, figure that out, and do it the rest of the year. There's the pitch. Hard hit ball, backhand nicely by the second baseman. He'll throw to first. And the next one coming, and a hard hit ball. Smashed one hop to third, grabbed by Dawson. He gets a play, and he makes it. Throws out Mangum, and ends the ball game. LSU takes advantage of some Bulldog errors and gets some timely hits of their own and win the ball game 6-2. to two. We went down there and um, won the series down there so we knew that they were going to come out and give us everything they had. And um, Fiedo, he's a phenomenal pitcher, and he threw really well for them, and threw a lot of strikes with a few different pitches. And um, he, you know, he threw really well for them. There's a ton of ground balls that that just find holes. Uh, pretty remarkable. Uh, I thought Austin Sexton pitched pretty darn well. Again, if we get ground ball outs there, of the first 12 ground balls that were hit, eight of them were hits. So there, there's a little bit of positioning, a little bit of luck, a little bit of everything that goes into that, but. Uh, you know, Florida's a great team, and if they get on a roll like that, they're, they're really tough to, to settle down. And, you know, they, they pitched it really well against us. They defended. We hit balls over their head. They ran down, made great plays. Florida's a great club. So is LSU, and, and so is Alabama. But uh, in those two ball games, it, it snowballed on us a little bit. The positive about the Florida game is we got some innings to some guys who really needed to pitch. Hilkington needed to pitch. Paul needed to pitch, yeah, among others. And they needed to get in there, they needed to show what they can do. A lot of them, they did some pretty special things. And um, I think it's really good for us going into where we are right now because, um, you know, if we need somebody to come in and get a strike out or come in and blow somebody up with a fastball, uh, our coaching staff has seen those guys and what they can do. And, yeah, you know, it just, it really makes us all excited to, to see guys come out of the pen like that who hadn't really uh, thrown that much and then go out there and do stuff like that. Playing well helps you no matter what, because the more often you play well, the more often you're going to play well in the future. So there were sequences where we played well against Alabama. We played well. We had some moments against LSU where we played, did some things well. We had some moments against Florida where we played well. So all of that's good preparation for this upcoming weekend in our regional. But certainly, uh, I think our kids are rested. I think we've had great practices after leaving the SEC tournament. And I think our kids are excited about this, this unbelievable challenge we have in our regional NCAA tournament here in Starkville.
the postseason is, is a new season. Just because you win the Southeastern Conference doesn't, I mean, it's a great honor and we're excited about it, but it, it doesn't mean you're going to do anything in the postseason. you got to keep doing the things that won you that championship, and that's why it's a double elimination tournament, because you, know, you have to play well for an entire weekend, not just one day. Uh, you got to play well on multiple days. So. Uh, that's the focus of our kids, and uh, we've had some great workouts. Really fortunate, we're just practicing in the rain. Uh, we're picking up wet balls, we're having to make plays with wet balls, throwing wet bat balls, uh, having to hit wet balls. Um, so uh, every type of situation, I, I feel like we're ready for. I think we have prepared in a, in a whole lot of different ways and really pushed our kids on Sunday, very much a conditioning-oriented practice uh, within the framework of the game. And, We've teared down a little bit as the week has gone on, and uh, I think our kids have had a phenomenal attitude, and I think they're ready to do everything they can to try and win a, a regional against a really good field. When you talk about a Cal State Fullerton, you talk about a Louisiana Tech, you talk about a Southeast Missouri State, I mean, that's a very difficult regional. All those clubs have great pitching and, and can really score, so we're, we're gonna have to be at our best. We're going into this regional right now, and you know we're, we're facing every team like, like it's a championship game. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna do everything that we possibly can to win every game. We have the absolute best fans in the country, and it's gonna be a packed house. And um, I, I can't imagine what it's like trying to come and play in here as a as an opposing team. And um, you know, with uh, the left field lounge and you know those awesome people out there, um, you know, I can't imagine what it's like to try and play in that environment, and especially if you haven't before. One of the great benefits, of course, is, is you know, our kids sleeping in their own bed, our kids used to our schedule, our kids used to their surroundings. Um, you know, obviously our fans are phenomenal fans, you know, that will be in attendance. I, I think there are a lot of, of positives. Um, you know, you just, you don't want your kids to try too hard. You want the, them to let the game come to them. I remember in 1989, our club uh, won the SEC and we're playing North Carolina in a regional. And it just felt like in our regional, at that time it was a six team regional, felt like all of us were really pushing hard because we wanted to get to Omaha so badly in 89. In 1990, we were relaxed, loose, we let the game came, come to us and, and we got to a College World Series and won 50 games. We know our surface, we know our field, we know the conditions that we play in and uh, it's always fun to have a big crowd come out and support us and it, uh, a, lot of these, a lot of these teams that, that we're having at our place has never played in front of a crowd like this and so uh, it's a little intimidating for your first time, so I think it's going to be huge for us. I do believe that it's it, it's fun for our players to experience teams from different you know areas of the country. I, I think it's a great experience for them. I think it's a great experience for the teams that are coming going to come in here. I'm sure uh, Fullerton will you know love the experience of coming to an area that they haven't been to this year. Um, that's part of college baseball is having new experiences. It's part of the college experience period, you know, to go out in the world and experience things that you haven't experienced before. So I think our kids embrace that and I think they're going to have a good time. There.